Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to you. My name is Nick and it's the Roundup on the channel where we look at the games we've looked at in the last few weeks at least and then try and put them in some kind of top six order. Now, um, as you know, if you're a long time watcher of the channel, you know um, we was doing this full time. Now I had to do it part time, so I had to go back to work. My journey times are quite long, so it's a bit of a struggle to keep getting videos up. But I'm still looking for more local work. I'll keep you posted as we go. So there's less games to choose from. Commodore 64 games has been quite a lot less. I apologise, and the Amiga ones has been as well. But I'm determined to keep the channel going, but it is quite tough uh, going. So thank you for your continued support. Now, before we come to the top six, we did have time to look at one uh, pinball game, quite an old one really, on the PlayStation 4, Pinball FX3, which was Spider-Man. Already reviewed this on the PlayStation 3 some time ago, so it's nice catching up with it on the PlayStation 4 now. I think um, Williams Volume 2 uh, is going to come out soon, but we'll concentrate on Spider-Man for the time being. Uh, released by Sen Studios in 2017, when they upgraded a lot of the tables on the PlayStation 4. It's got improved lighting. It's from the Marvel uh, Universe, really. Now Spider-Man's there. It's got all your um, villains you'd expect from that. Uh, the Green Goblin, uh, Mysterion, and uh, the other chap with the name temporarily escapes me, but different ramps, uh, pumpkin, multi balls, it's all there and a rather good game. Now, uh, there are a few um, games, as you might know, that didn't quite make the top six this time round. A couple of uh, Dizzy side games, aside from the, the main uh, series, there's Panic Dizzy, which all reviewed on the Commodore Amiga, which you won't dwell on too much, where you just have to match shapes um, in a moving conveyor belt down the bottom of the screen. It looks like it's had a late Dizzy edition to try and maybe sell more copies. It's all right, but not super exciting. And the same could be said for Dizzy Down the Rapids as well. Um, based on Tubin, it's trying to copy that to a certain degree. It's a little bit flat for me, but probably works better in a two a players. Uh, some other games didn't quite make it, which might have made your top six if you had them back in the time, was Avenger on the ZX Spectrum, published by Gremlin in 1986. It's a sequel to The Way of the Tiger, but doesn't look much like The Way of the Tiger at all, and I actually do prefer that original game. In Avenger, it's a top-down view rather than a side view. You're a ninja, and you must open various doors by collecting keys. Do it in the right order, or you're going to get stuck quite quickly, and you also collect treasure. Quite easy to get lost if you don't know what you're doing, and on the review, because it was my first go of it as it is with quite a lot of these sort of games are struggling to know uh, what to do but it's not too bad Avenger well worth persevering with I think but as I say didn't quite make my top six and the other one was on the Sega Mega Drive we reviewed quite a few proportionally um, on the Mega Drive or Genesis compared to normal um, it was Road Blasters by Tengen in 1991. Quite a faithful conversion. Uh, plays better than the Commodore Amiga and the ZX Spectrum versions, but I would expect it from that. Um, and I think it's really a case of do you like Road Blasters or not. For me, it's a little bit uh, simple, but that isn't a bad thing quite a lot of the time because you can get straight into it. If you've had a busy day at school, college or work and you're exhausted and just want to... Um, no nonsense, no brain uh, fun, it's okay there. But I think there's better races about, but as I say, what it's attempting to do, it does rather well. So that was a road of blasters. So I'm going a, a little bit quicker uh, than usual, am I? I don't know, I can't remember. I've got a brain like a sieve. Well done, Nick. Hooray! Right, top six time. Here we go. Um, now, in sixth place... Uh, game I didn't quite get on with very well, but I can see it was quite clever. On the ZX Spectrum, it's Euridium by Houston Consultants in 1986. Now, it's a horizontal scrolling shooter where um, aliens are attacking all the planets in our solar system, trying to rob all our minerals. So you, in a single ship, have to go to each dreadnought, alien dreadnought throughout there, destroy all the ships, uh, and then get to the end, and then land your ship to actually um, rescue that particular planet. Now, the game is very, very difficult. I played it with a Pokemon, so I can show you a bit more of the game. Sometimes I get a little bit of hassle saying, Nick, why are you playing with, with this Pokemon? Well, you haven't quite got the idea of why I'm playing it. It's not a walkthrough. I just want to show you a greater percentage of the game. See what the graphics are like, what the sounds are like, and more importantly, as a kid, would you have gone back to um, play that again? Uh, oh, I played it a few times. But I got a bit frustrated. It was clever. Uh, the scrolling is really, really smooth, and um, a lot of people have this as some of their favourite shooters on the spectrum, albeit of all time. So I had to put it in six place by Houston Consultants, although it wasn't particularly my favourite, but deserved to get there ahead of the other ones, I think, for pure technical standards. 
In fifth place, Super Monaco Grand Prix on the Sega Mega Drive by Sega in 1990. And based on the arcade cabinet, I already reviewed in the previous couple of weeks Ayrton Senna Super Monaco Grand Prix 2, which is the sequel to this. It plays quite similar, although the sequel is ever so slightly better, gives you a few more tracks and a few more options. But this is good as well, different difficulty levels. I'm always a sucker for racing games, and this performs admirably. Some people might think, Nick, you should have had this a bit further up because you did like Ayrton Senna Super Monaco Grand Prix 2. But, you know, there are a few other games, I think, this time round, which worthy of going ahead of that. So that's why that's that's in fifth place, but definitely in the top six. And in fourth place, an absolutely fantastic conversion, the best um, Pac-Man conversion I've seen, is Moose Pac-Man on the Sega Genesis again, or Mega Drive by Tengen in 1991, based again on the arcade cabinet. All the sounds are there, it scrolls really well, plays like a dream, and as I say, most accurate to the arcade that I've ever played. Woody reviewed this game on the Atari 2600 and the ZX Spectrum as well, but this version is the definitive version. You can play like a standard version of the game, or you can play different sort of like mazes, there's the strange and various other ones too which put the power pills in slightly different positions and make it a bit difficult more difficult to navigate around the maze the ghosts are the same the premise of pac-man is exactly the same as well i mean my favorite pac-man game of all time is pac mania on the commodore amiga which is also a good conversion on the sega mega drive so i don't put this too far behind that because it's such a lovely conversion. So in sixth place, I've got Iridium on the ZX Spectrum, published by Houston Consultants in 1986. In fifth place, The Great Racer Super Monaco Grand Prix on the Sega Mega Drive by Sega in 1990, a great arcade conversion. And in fourth place, Miss Pac-Man, another great arcade conversion on the Mega Drive by Tengen in 1991. So let's have a look at the top three this time round. Three brilliant games. Um, as I say, if you've got these in a dis different order, then uh, let me know. Now, I do want to do a few more of these sort of like uh, vlog things. This is just a roundup because I used to do the... Um uh, the diary cams where I walk through some um, woods near to me, but I haven't really had, to do, had time to do that because of the work situation. But, you know, hopefully I'm trying to get a bit more local. But yes, stop jibber jabbering, Nick. Top three. In third place, on the Mega Drive again, so we are Mega Drive um, dominant here, is the Chaos Engine by Microprose in 1993 and developed by the fantastic Bitmap Brothers. Now this is a game I've already reviewed on the Commodore Amiga and absolutely loved. Didn't like the sequel as much, but the, the original game is brilliant. This plays virtually identical. Um, seems to be slightly quicker to me, but it might be my imagination. Loading times a lot quicker because it's on a cartridge rather than discs. But for those people that don't know, it's like a steampunk um, game. It's top down where uh, a machine called the Chaos Engine is taken over the world, mutated uh, humans and animals, and you must go um, and, and attack and blow this up over various stages. You, What's good about this game is um, you select player one, that's obvious, uh, and then if you haven't got a human player two there, the computer will select player two, and you've got a choice of six different characters who've got different weapons, different speeds, different skills. You will get a different experience if you complete the game with a different character. Well, I think it's really, really clever. Got to play this one to really admire it, but, you know, a really good top-down shooter, a run-and-gun, if you will. In second place on the ZX Spectrum, we got Phoenix by Mega Dodo Software in 1983. Not an official conversion, but um, a conversion of the game Phoenix, which I've also played on the Atari 2600. Prefer the 2600 version, but this game for 1983 on the ZX Spectrum, originally code for the 16K, which makes it even more impressive, is really good. You've got different waves of aliens, um, take them out of the way, good movement, and then you're on to the main mothership, which is a huge ship for the time on the screen. Shoot the alien in the middle of that ship, and it's on to the next uh, round, and everything goes slightly quicker, or at least I think it goes slightly quicker. It was a bit hard to tell. So the just game game goes on and on and on to you eventually die. So that is Phoenix, spelt different from the um, the arcade. This is P H E E N I X, where um, the arcade is spelt in the more traditional way. A really good shooter, one of the best ones on the spectrum, I would say. And in first place, I had to put this uh, top, although I'm mainly a kickoff fan. I do like Sensible Soccer as well. I've given it away already. First place, Sensible Soccer by Renegade Software in 1993. Wasn't really expecting this to play as well as the Commodore Amiga version it's ported from, but indeed it does. Um, gives you different modes, uh, World Cup mode and difficulty levels as well. Beginner, I think medium or hard. 
and um, you know and it's really really addictive game what's good about sensible soccer is you, the easy it is to pass the ball around and you know fictitious uh, team players names in this one although you can edit them uh, later versions of sensible soccer this was corrected as I think maybe they got a better license uh, awesome game sensible soccer if you've got a um, Sega Mega Drive then I would well worth getting this other football games review before uh, the original FIFA game uh, FIFA International Soccer and Dino 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 Dini Soccer. Um, this one is better than those two. Um, you know, there we go. So in third place, we got Chaos Engine on the Mega Drive by Microprose in 1993. In second place, Phoenix on the ZX Spectrum by Mega Dodo Software in 1983. And in first place, Sensible Soccer on the Mega Drive by Renegade Software in 1993. So thank you very much. Sorry for the slowdown in content going up, although we still we still quite a lot of stuff going up. Um, we should be able to keep things uh, going. Um, yeah, watch this uh, space. Um, now I'm back at work, more money can go into the channel, so we might upgrade the cameras or various upgrades as well. But it's going to be a slow process. So thank you to everyone for watching, uh, especially those people that share the videos on different platforms. That helps it grow. Until next time, take great care of yourself and a very fun. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.